terrified. Listen to me, Republicans, listen. You are the people in history they warned us about. They warned us about people like you. Let's start looking at this derangement syndrome with a wonderful montage that the Media Research Center has put out of the way the news has covered, covered Trump for the last four years. This is cut five. Let's be frank, a national nightmare is upon us. It's not really a serious <laughs> dispute anymore that President Trump is not up to this job. How badly uh, is he failing right now? That address probably should have come with a, a Surgeon General's warning. It was hazardous to the truth. Do, do you think journalists are going to look back years from now and regret not doing even more to speak out about this lying and deceit? I think some journalists will. Is it appropriate to ask whether the president is having difficulty with rationality? He is unstable. He's not well. The president is a Russian operative. America's president sided with its enemy today. That would be treason, right? To believe that the president isn't compromised requires such a leap of faith. All he had to do was not, you know, put on jammies and crawl under the covers with Vladimir Putin, and he couldn't do that. What does Putin have on him? What does Putin, Putin have, have on him? Trump. The Trump administration has been copying the wrong career. Dime store slurring Mussolini. Wanna be dictator. We if the party to... nominates uh, Hitler, are you gonna vote for him? Does this look like Germany in 1933? <laughs> That's the coverage that Trump has gotten. But the important thing is, they don't know their bias. This is that's what causes the derangement. If you're just a political operative attacking people, if that's the Democrats saying that, if that's Nancy Pelosi saying that, that's just cynical manipulation of of political, you know, uh, of of the people. That's all it is. That's what pol pol politicians do. We expect it, but this is the press. They don't know. Here is Mara Gay, who was on the New York Times editorial board, a very far leftist. She compared Republicans when Republicans voted against impeachment. She compared the to Jim Crow. This is a person of deep bias. Here's what she says about the New York Times coverage. This is cut six. When the New York Times editorial board endorsed Joe Biden, we didn't do it because uh, the New York Times is a partisan newspaper. We're actually not partisan, um, but I think we did it because we see him as the best chance at saving our democracy, and we can have policy debates uh, later. I know um, Michael and I have had them too. Uh, this isn't about uh, this election is not about Democrat or Republican. This is really about right and wrong and saving the soul of the nation. <laughs> We're not biased. We're just saving the soul of the nation. That's not what's biased about that. We we will have policy debates between left and far left, but we you know it's it's this right wing. So here's what they play. They wrote over the weekend. All right, this is they took up an entire. Uh, section, like an insert section of the review in the Sunday paper to write this endorsement of Joe Biden that is really just an assault on Donald Trump. And this is what's not biased to Mara Gay, okay? It's called End Our National Crisis. That's the headline. And if you're watching, you can probably see the picture of the Wil <laughs> Wilton flower. And it had the words corruption, anger, chaos, incompetence, lies, decay, which sounds like the 1619 Project, right? I mean, this is from the newspaper that published the 1619 Project and the Red Century series, which said, oh, what a wonderful place the Soviet Union was. Soviet Union, great place. The sex was one. Yeah, you were a slave. You had no money. You had to live with your six other families. But the sex Sex was great in the Soviet, you know, that's the, the New York Times. So you want to talk about corruption, anger, chaos, incompetence, lies, decay, especially decay because the New York Times actually did used to be a newspaper. I know it's hard to believe, but it did. This is their take on Donald Trump. And, uh, you know, this is not biased. It's just they're just saving the soul of the nation. Don't think of this as biased. These are just the facts from the New York Times. Donald Trump's real. I'm sorry. Donald Trump's re-election campaign poses the greatest threat to American democracy since World War II. So there was Hitler and then, you know, Stalin, eh, you know, he was OK. Stalin was fine. He was, the sex was great. The sex was great under Stalin. But but Hitler and then Trump. That's it. <laughs> Mr. Trump's ruinous tenure already has gravely damaged the United States at home and around the world. And we're so used to this language, this nonspecific, terrible threats. He's abused the power of his office. He's denied the legitimacy of his political opponents. I mean, they're calling him Hitler, but they're not denying it. He shattered the norms that have bound the nation together for generations. What are those norms? The norms are the Democrats want to make the government grow and take over our freedoms quickly. 
the Republicans wanted a little less quickly. They, you know, they want to destroy the country in a year. The Republicans say, nah, take two years. OK, and that's what they have been. They've been liking this is the rent seeking, using the government to increase profits, crony capitalism, which they're all on board with, not just the Republicans, it's the Republicans and the Democrats and spreading that money to voters, buying those voters. And that's what Trump has gotten in the way of. And, and maybe, listen, I'm not saying that doesn't make Trump a bad guy. Maybe Trump's a bad guy, too. But, I, but the, he has gotten in the way of this. The n- enormity, ah, the enormity and the variety of Mr. Trump's misdeeds can feel overwhelming. Repetition has dulled our sense of outrage. But the, and then they have, under this, they just have one column after another, how Trump has destroyed gay people and, uh, by appointing the, the first gay cabinet member and how he's destroyed black people by making their lives better and giving them, you know, uh, uh, jobs that they didn't have before. But here's what he's done, okay? As the world runs out of time to confront climate change, Mr. Trump has denied the need for action, abandoned international cooperation, and attacked efforts to limit emissions. So he got out of the Paris Accord, which all experts agreed would do nothing. He has mounted a cruel crackdown on both legal and illegal immigration without proposing a sensible policy for determining who should be allowed to come to the United States. And that's just not true. He has proposed a sensible policy. They just haven't done anything about it because they want those people coming in. The Republicans want them. The Democrats want them. The Journal wants them. The Times wants them. Everybody wants those illegal guys coming in so they can pay them less money and so they can screw screw the vote. They all have a reason. He's the only guy who said, why is the border open? Okay. Obsessed with reversing the achievements of his immediate predecessor, Barack Obama, he has sought to persuade both Congress and the courts to get rid of the Affordable Care Act, which is a mess, a terrible law. He campaigned as a champion of ordinary workers, but has governed on behalf of the wealthy. Really? He has strained long-standing alliances while embracing dictators like North Korea's Kim Jong-un and Russia's Vladimir Putin. You know, I mean, so in other words, it's a combination of they disagree with him and lies. And they disagree with him and lies. But the thing is, because they are so immersed in their own world and because they don't talk to anybody outside of it and because they've convinced themselves of these crises, they do believe they do believe that climate change could kill us in 12 years. And anything is, you know, who said anybody who says, you know, even even the science doesn't say that. Even the worst reports don't say that. Anybody who says it isn't listening to the science because the science is all in their heads. And these are the scientists, by the way, who think that gender is a construct and women are men and men are women. And, you know, you should take little children and change their sex if they should happen to come out and uh, with a doll instead of a truck one day. You know, I mean, this is this is the kind of thinking that's going on. You know, this used to be Keith Olbermann, who's back now, used to talk like this. But he used to be a joke. This is cut 13. This is what Keith Olbermann is saying now. I'm tired of the thought that we are now going to repeat the months of March and April in this country, a country that should have learned something, but which in large part has been authorized to wallow and die in its own stupidity because of one man, one dumb bastard, one selfish son of a one real life major French attacking the only hope we have, the science and insisting science is wrong, and Fauci is an idiot, and only I can save you, and insisting you can do whatever you want, then the disease affects almost nobody. Donald Trump should be on trial for 220,000 murders, death penalty for each count. <laughs> He's good, but he gets the death penalty to the president. Here's Clinton advisor Paul Bagala, uh, 22. I'm terrified. Listen to me, Republicans, listen. You are the people in history they warned us about. They warned us about people like you. Pay attention. We're losing our democracy. Wake up. Wake up. That was not Paul Begala. <laughs> <laughs> Another one of these Democrat ladies screaming in cars. But here's Paul Begala, a Clinton advisor. OK, 22, uh, 12. Sorry. 12. In fact, I talk to Democrats all the time. The most common thing that Democrats say is, ah! <laughs> they're scared to death and they're highly motivated. And I want them to be that way. I'm sorry to scream in your ear, Aaron, but the, <laughs> that's that's what they say. Seriously, you call them. That's what they say. A primal scream at the prospect that somehow Trump might get a second term. So they're highly motivated. 
<laughs> well, I wanted to play those cuts in reverse, but my point is simply that this focus, this trickles down. This is trickle down hysteria. Remember how Ronald Reagan had trickle down profits, trickle down money. This is trickle down hysteria. This is the people that the New York Times are hysterical. The commentators have all become Keith Olbermann, and now these poor women, these poor Democrat women, are driving around their cars, screaming into their cell phones, and taking videos of it as if this was some kind of commentary. It is trickle down hysteria. I hope you enjoyed that clip from The Andrew Clavin Show. If you did, go ahead and hit the subscribe button so you stay up to date on all our future content.